So some of you are smiling. I think in a minute you will hate me. So <laughs> I have mixed messages. Well, actually, uh, good news and bad news. The bad news is on current trajectory, most of us here today will not be able to live to our full biological lifespan potential. So that's uh, some grim opening. And as we speak, uh, there is a huge fire uh, going on in Australia. And disasters like this is only going to amplify in the coming month and the years. But the good news is that we actually have once, uh, to the best of my knowledge, one solution that still exists that entails using the most abundant and ubiquitous materials we have on Earth to tackle this planetary scale problem. Anything high tech, we just don't have enough of. And the problem is created by each and every one of us. Here in America, each of us spit out one ton of CO2 every three weeks. That's huge. And the good news is that using the cheap materials, it's possible to negate the heating effect of that CO2 at cost of less than $10. But first, we need to be uh, really uh, honest about several facts. First, we will settle once and for all that climate change is real. But second, maybe a bit of a shocker for people here, um, we actually cannot let go of the fossil fuel industry immediately. We are literally addicted. And uh, third, if somebody tells you that renewables are a solution, they are lying to you, just as are the climate deniers. All right, so climate deniers like to say that Earth has undergone a lot of natural fluctuations as an argument that everything that's happening is natural. So that's what Earth did uh, in this CO2 temperature plane before we started to burn coal in 1750. And it's going around, but uh, look at the logarithm time scale. The motion is very slow. It moves a little bit over like 1,000 years. But ever since we started to burn coal, we have accelerated the movement by more than two orders of magnitude in speed. So that's certainly not natural. So that's settled. And this trajectory is bringing the Earth system rapidly out of a uh, um, parameter space that's, that life on this planet can survive. So plants certainly do need CO2, but at a height too high of this uh, concentration, then uh, animals will start to feel the acidity and die off. On the temperature axis, even one degree Celsius can be too much for a certain species. And the two degrees has been shown to be basically universally detrimental for most uh, experimental systems that's been ex examined. And at three degrees C, we're talking about planetary scale biological annihilation of any multicellular species on this planet. So we obviously have like two boundaries that's limiting what can happen in the future. One is uh, the temperature boundary, the other is CO2. But on current course, we're gonna hit the, the temperature boundary way before the CO2 intrinsic acidity effect. And in fact, even if we burn all the fossil fuel reserve, we won't get there. So the only thing we need to be worried about is the temperature effect. We desperately, desperately need a way to gain negative mobility on the temperature axis. So that's what we need to achieve. So now we're ready to discuss why we cannot let go of the fossil fuels. So when we burn fossil fuel, we emit CO2, but also aerosols that can scatter light. And part of the sunlight gets reflected back into space. And the amount of cooling is substantial based on the best uh, studies and simulations. It's about two watts per square meter everywhere on Earth. And that translates to about one degrees of heating if we removed all fossil fuel emissions and the consequent aerosols. So those are papers that you can consult if you're interested. So assume that we go into 100% renewable as of today, what would happen? First of all, removing aerosol will pretty much within five years give another degree Celsius rise in temperature. And thereafter, the rise in CO2 and temperature will be slower compared to fossil fuel economy, but it still happens because the infrastructure still takes energy and resources. And a certain technology like wind generate heat 
due to friction loss in its uh, energy generation process. <laughs> so solution, uh, these are not solutions because it doesn't give us a mobility vector pointing down to lower temperatures. So the solution uh, is to use the mirrors in order to uh, cancel out the heating trapped by CO2. And one ton can be canceled by eight feet by eight feet square installed in a sunny area. Glass is wonderful because you take sand and sunlight, you can make a glass and into all different kind of shapes. And it's strong as an engineering material. So the, the plan is to one, stabilize temperature as fast as possible by making glass mirrors, install them in the ocean on deserts at the cost of 50 to 50, 500 billion. And second, once we have a huge uh, glass manufacturing infrastructure, we should uh, push for a high uh, penetration of concentrating solar thermal energy, getting rid of CO further CO2 emissions. And then finally, we can talk about drawing down CO2. Uh, for example, if you take uh, oyster shell, just heat, then you get a calcium oxide, which then you can uh, scatter into the ocean to neutralize CO2 that dissolves into the ocean. So here is the roadmap to uh, on how to survive the next 50 years. Thank you. Thank you.